All right, hi guys. Um, my name is Mark Vetter, and I'm one of the fellows here at SSF. Um, and today we're going to be talking about a paper that was recently published in the journal Curious, titled "Piercing of the Lumbocostal Ligament by the Subcostal Nerve: A Previously Unreported Case." So it's a pretty short case report, but um, so it talks a little bit about the 12th thoracic ventral rami, which is also known as the subcostal nerve. And the subcostal nerve runs inferiorly to the 12th. Um, rib. So if you see here, this is the, the main figure in the paper to the 12th rib right here, and this is the subcostal nerve running just inferiorly. And so it exits the spine um, just below the 12th thoracic vertebra. So here, this TP right here, if you can see it, is the transverse process of the first lumbar vertebrae. So we can see um, that the subcostal nerve exits the spinal um, column just above that, underneath the 12th thoracic vertebrae. And it's the largest of the ventral thoracic rami and often has a communicating branch with the first lumbar ventral ramus. And so after exiting the spine, the subcostal nerve usually passes anteriorly or inferiorly to the lumbocostal ligament, which you can see in this image is just right here. And the lumbocostal ligament usually stretches either between um, the lateral side of um, L1 or L2 and the inferior edge of the 12th rib. In this case, it kind of looks like it's starting over at the lateral side of um, L2. And so then after that, the subcostal nerve tra travels ventrolaterally um, between the transversus abdominis and the external oblique muscle, and it innervates the anterolateral abdominal wall. It also gives off a cutaneous branch, um, uh, which continues superficially to the skin of the anterior gluteal region. Um, and sometimes this branch can descend about um, five centimeters above the iliac crest, so it can descend quite low. Um, and so kind of the important question here is why is this nerve important? Why are we interested in any sort of um, anatomical variations that have to do with this subcostal nerve? Um, and it's because recently lateral approaches to lumbar spine surgery are becoming increasingly popular, and this nerve can be especially vulnerable, um, an especially vulnerable structure during these procedures. Um, for a couple reasons. First of all, there are a couple studies that show that it has a relatively large amount of branches compared to other intercostal nerves. And also, it lies a little bit more inferiorly to the 12th rib than other intercostal nerves lie um, to their ribs. So, on average, it can run nearly two centimeters below the 12th rib, which kind of exposes it more to the possibility of iatrogenic damage. And if it is damaged, you can get some complications post-surgically, such as abdominal wall her hernias or um, loss of sensitivity in the region. Um, yeah, so it's important to kind of keep in mind the course of this nerve as well. So um, what was interesting about this particular case report is, as I mentioned previously, the subcostal nerve usually passes either um, anteriorly or inferiorly to the lumbocostal ligament once it exits the spinal column. But in this particular case, Dr. Iwanago, while doing a dissection from the posterior side um, of the, well, the left side, posterior dissection of the left side, um, of a male fresh frozen cadaver found that the subcostal nerve was actually transpiercing the lumbocostal ligament rather than passing anteriorly or inferiorly. So this is really important to keep in mind just sort of as a landmark um, potentially during surgery in order to find the subcostal nerve. It's important to keep in mind where that nerve might lie relative to ligaments and the rib in that area. Um, and also there's a minor concern that um, if the ligament did become ossified it could potentially lead to some sort of entrapment syndrome. So that's kind of the whole basic gist of this case report and some of the importance um, behind it. But yeah, it's kind of yeah. So one mem uh, one uh, viewer asked what TP stands for. That's the transverse process of uh, L1, which is here, and the twelfth rib. So the focus of this this is a case report found in a cadaver. This is the left posterior side of the cadaver, uh, the twelfth rib, uh, the TP transverse process of L1. The iliac crest would be way down here, and this portal between the 12th rib and the iliac crest is where uh, many spine surgeons access uh, to get to the lumbar spine, especially in the more popular lateral approaches that we're doing these days. And uh, in a previous report from the Seattle Science Foundation, we found that uh, the subcostal nerve is the predominant innervation that you find in that little window between the transverse process, uh, excuse me, of the, the 12th rib and the iliac crest. So it's uh, the most important nerve here. Um, we've also uh, published uh, in uh, the journal Curious about the lumbocostal ligament. 
which is a, a, an underrepresented nerve in the anatomy literature. Uh, and this structure will connect uh, L1, maybe L2, sometimes transverse processes, to the 12th rib. And normally, uh, as Mark said, the subcostal nerve, which is the ventral ramus of T12, uh, passes um, anterior to this. Uh, in a prior report, we found that sometimes there's a little branch that will pierce through the ligament. But this case is uh, unusual because, to our knowledge, we've never seen a, an earlier report where the entire nerve passes through the ligament. Uh, he mentioned that the ligament, if it's ossified, and whether it's ossified or not, um, the nerve may be pinched here with movement. And if it's pinched, then you get um, a deficit in function of the subcostal nerve. And the subcostal nerve has both motor and sensory functions, right? So who knows what the sensory function is of it? Where, where is the patient going to complain on their body uh, that they're having? Yep, yeah, so one branch of the subcostal nerve goes across the iliac crest down toward the trochanter, greater trochanter. And then uh, the continuation anteriorly, that's its lateral branch, its anterior branch is going to serve the muscles of the anterior uh, lateral abdominal wall and then will end um, just below your umbilicus, right? So the belly button, if you find that, that's where T10 goes to uh, in most people. So T11 just uh, below that, and then T12 just below that. Uh, why would you be punching the nerve? I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, so one viewer asked uh, about ligaments ossifying, and yes, ligaments can ossify. They can turn into bone, and there are many examples of that. Uh, Mark just wrote, uh, actually, a review paper looking at many uh, ligaments, uh, the so-called false ligaments, and some of them ossify, like the suprascapular uh, ligament, etc. So uh, the other thing that he brought out is that this nerve, uh, if injured, because it, uh, most uh, surgeons forget that it also innervates muscle, uh, we forget that these uh, oblique muscles have a nerve innervation and if you injure that nerve innervation then those muscles don't work so well so the patients may present with a bulge uh, here in the anterior lateral abdominal wall which represents a hernia so those muscles can no longer compress the abdominal contents um, and you think about the anterior lateral muscles the obliques almost like a, a muscular girdle right so they form this tight girdle um, and if they're not functioning, then your intra-abdominal contents, when you strain down, will bulge out. Um, and patients uh, find that uh, unattractive. So uh, it's something that the surgeons try to avoid. So subcostal nerve, why, why do we call it subcostal nerve? Uh, but all the nerves above it, up to T1, we call intercostal nerves. So intercostal means between ribs, right? So subcostal is below the 12th rib. There's nothing, no more ribs, so uh, you call it subcostal. Uh, rarely you can have a rib from the L1 vertebra, right? So then the subcostal changes and can actually be, you know, technically a sub, uh, intercostal nerve. And what do you call a rib that comes from L1? All clinical anatomists should know this. Gorilla rib, right? Gorilla rib. So a gorilla rib uh, comes from uh, L1 for obvious reasons, and uh, that means you can have 13 uh, pairs of ribs. So what do you say uh, if we have all these eleven ribs? Uh, you're missing a rib. Yeah, a plastic. That's a good question. Yeah, um, that's very uncommon to be missing a rib. The more common thing is to have fusion of ribs, uh, and nobody's gone there before you know what do you call this when there's you know a missing rib all right great job uh, mark and uh, again this is an unusual case that uh, has not been uh, previously published uh, in the medical literature and uh, we welcome everyone back this is a weekly uh, meeting that we have at the Seattle Science Foundation every uh, Wednesday morning at 11, and we go over a uh, recent uh, publication or uh, other germane article from the literature. Thank you, and see you next week.